Hi, Brussels. How are you doing today? Good. Some energy. Are you a bit tired after lunch? It's been a few talks behind before me, so hope you're energized. This talk is going to be a little bit interactive, so I uh, hope you will like it. So today I'm here to talk about undo redo, which is a bit of a, an obscure topic. It feels very niche, but I promise you it's going to be interesting. And more specifically, undo redo in a multiplayer environment. So, oops. I'm Steven, so uh, I've been working in the, I'm really passionate about creative tools and specifically collaborative creative tools. And I've been doing this for nearly a decade, as, as you mentioned, at uh, companies like Facebook and InVision. And I'm now running uh, LiveBlocks. Has anyone here heard of LiveBlocks? Yes, few hands. Has anybody used it? Okay, cool. It's normal, we're a pretty new startup. We started a couple of years ago, maybe a bit less. And uh, let me tell you about what it is. So we essentially help companies and developers like you guys uh, create collaborative experiences. Uh, basically, if you think about tools like Figma or Notion, Google Docs, Google Slides, we provide the APIs and the tools so that you can make those kind of experiences without having to build all that infrastructure in-house and can have multiple people together in a document. So today we're going to dive specifically into undo redo in a multiplayer world. We have multiple people can, that can manipulate the same kind of data at the same time. And let's go to the next slide. Cool. So the first point that's challenging with undo redo in a multiplayer environment is that it needs to be local to each client. So if we look at, is there enough contrast here? Can you see this? Maybe not. Let me see. So a little fun fact, uh, last night we tested the, the, the deck uh, here, and I spent a lot of time like, you know, fine-tuning the, the, the contrast, making sure it was right, and it wasn't right at all on this projector. So I spent the night uh, building a little light thin version of this, which might be a little bit better, but maybe not. I don't know. What's better? Is it light or dark? Which one is the best? I think dark is probably better. All right, we're going to keep going with that one. So if you build Android Redo in a single player application, typically what most apps do, they use a concept called the memento pattern, which is used by state management libraries like Redux, for example. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. Essentially what you do is that as soon as you make a change, you basically store the previous state of that change. And so if I hit undo here, uh, basically I just go back in time and we just need to save this. So it's pretty straightforward. The challenge was this, though, if I play this, this little interactive, let me see if flight is better. I'll stick to, I'll stick to dark. Um, let's look here at user A deletes the circle, then user B changes the square to purple, then what happens when the user A hits undo? It will delete the circle, at that time the square was still orange, so user B changed to purple was overwritten. So not great, that leads to conflict. Some, some people have made changes, the other person has lost their work. All of that to say that the memento pattern doesn't work in a multiplayer environment. And thankfully, we have a solution for this in the multiplayer world. We can rely on the comment, comment, comment pattern where each user's opposite comment is stored in order to apply it later when people use undo and redo. So let's have a look at how it works. Remember, the key here is instead of storing the state, is to remember the comment of the user. So if I play here, I'm going to do the same action. User A deletes the circle, user B uh, changes the square to purple, then user A hits undo. Instead of losing that work, now we're basically re going to, to the comment that user A had done before, which was deleting the circle. So now we can merge those conflicts and show a circle that's uh, red, pink, I don't know what, how you see it here, and the other one, that's the square that's still purple. Uh, that being said, conflicts might still happen in some pretty rare cases, so I just wanted to highlight this um, to you guys. So here I changed the user A changed the square to yellow, user B deletes the square, but now user A hits undo. What should you do, right? What's the opposite comment of something that you've deleted? Any thoughts on this? Any ideas what could happen? Okay, fair enough. Uh, I'll show you some examples of some like famous, uh, I mean, pretty uh, well-used apps uh, that that have those kind of issues. 
So let's look at Figma first. So if you look on the left, uh, user A draws a rectangle. User B sees that in real time on the other side. Now user B uh, is going to change the square to red, for example. And if we go back to user A on the left-hand side, it's delete. Now user B does undo. What happens? Not great, right? Like you, you, start, you, you lost the experience. Google Slides, kind of the similar experience. If you go to user A, draws a rectangle, basically the same thing we just did in Figma. Change that rectangle to a color and go back to user A and delete. And now user B undoes. And still, the, re the rectangle still doesn't show up. Pitch, uh, it's kind of the same, same kind of approach, right? So same thing happened. And cool, deletes, and user B hits undo. So here, this actually, uh, the experience is, is a little bit worse because the, I'm gonna stop playing. I don't know if you noticed, but when the person delete the hit, hit undo, the selection of that rectangle that was deleted was there. So all that to say that that stuff is pretty complicated. So second point about building and redo experiences in the multiplayer environment is that intermediary comments need to be grouped in order to have a great uh, and redo experience. So here, I'm going to show you uh, what it would look like. So not seeing intermediary changes can be confusing. So here on the left, I'm going to drag a, a rectangle. But as I'm like mousing down, uh, the other person only sees the changes when I mouse up. So all that stuff that happened in between wasn't seen by the other person. It's fine, it kind of works, but you don't get that feeling of like being totally present with the other person. You don't really get what the other person is doing. Uh, instead, what we want to do is, as I'm dragging the layer, mouse down, as I'm mousing down, the other person should see this in real time. Subtle change, subtle difference, but very important. Uh, but with this comes some like undo, redo challenges. So here if I hit play, uh, I drag, cool, but now I want to undo. And we don't, we don't want to have to like undo like 20, 50 times as I was dragging, right? As I was dragging, I might be sending like hundreds of events. I don't want to be undoing like 100 times to go back to the initial state. So for this, uh, what can be done in this, this uh, comment pattern is we can pause and resume the history. So it's basically what we need to do is that when you start mousing down to drag, Pause the history at that time. When you mouse up, play it again, meaning that when you undo, you're going to go back to the initial state when you started dragging. Third point uh, about making undo redo uh, a great user experience in the multiplayer environment is that undo redo should affect more than just the document's content. So, not including selection in the undo. Redo stack, undo redo stack, leads to poor experience. So let's have a look here at what happens when user A selects the rectangle on the left, user B, user B on the other side deletes it, and then user B hits undo. You might not be noticing, but the selection isn't there, and you might be thinking, okay, who cares, that's fine. And it's fine, but the user A can be like uh, not kept in flow, so, right? because the selection isn't maintained for the, what he had previously. So now, let's have a look at a much better experience. Instead, <coughs> sorry, when I select the layer, delete it. When I go back, hit undo, I still have my selection on the left. Meaning that user A, as they're working, they can always be kept in flow. And it's very important when you build a creative tool to keep people in flow. So I'm going to drink, so round of applause. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for. Uh, Starting that trend this morning, appreciate it. Um, okay, cool, but this is the React conference. You may be wondering, why is he talking about this? I'm not here to talk about design. I'm here to talk about React, so how can I apply this to React? So at LiveBlocks, we have this uh, LiveBlocks slash React package that you can install into your app. It works very similarly to, we have a bunch of folks in there that work very similarly to uh, standard React hooks and allows you to do all that stuff very easily. 
So <coughs> I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so you can all see. Is that big enough? Yeah. So you can see here, I can use the use history hook uh, that has undo and redo in there. And I could map that to a button to undo and a button to redo. Or I could map that to a keyboard shortcut when I do Command Z uh, to do this. Uh, and then I just call undo, and literally that's all you need to do as a, as a developer to enable those kind of features. We take care of all the complexity behind the scenes. Uh, and then, uh, same thing with the pause and resume I just talked, talked about it earlier. You can do uh, use history, use pause and resume in there, and use that to, when you mouse down on pointer down here in the top, line three, and three, three to five, mouse down, pause, when I move, I keep moving the shape, right? Whatever property from the events that I get, client X, and Y. And then when I mouse up, resume the history. So that's pretty much it. We also have a bunch of other hooks that work very similarly to like use state. If you want to store the state of your document and make all that stuff work together. Uh, but it's only a lighting talk, so I can't really talk too much about this. Um, one thing I want to mention here as well uh, this was originally made from a blog post that we wrote in June with the help of Guillaume from the team and Mark. So I want to give a special kudos to Mark for the awesome uh, interactive visuals that you saw. He built all that stuff with React. Um, and by the way, this, uh, this deck was also made with live blocks and React. So I that was maybe a silly idea, knowing that I had to redo the entire theme last night. But uh, you, I was able to control my, my deck through a remote powered by live blocks, making all that stuff real time. And as Debbie said, I think, earlier, we also love stars on GitHub. So here's our uh, GitHub repo, Twitter, Discord, if you want to talk about all that stuff. And yeah, thank you so much for listening. Appreciate it.